Let's start with uh, a really wonderful way to arrive for your practice, which is resting butterfly <coughs> pose. Is anyone brand new to yin practice? Never done yin before? Nobody's done yin? Okay, cool. In yin, if anything feels potentially harmful, injurious, and out of pose, do something different, kind of like regular yoga, right? Like, so that bolster is going to go behind you on your mat lengthwise. Sit close to it. Have your blanket within reach. Um, and for my Zoomers, if you don't have a bolster, just grab blankets or pillow and kind of fashion a bolster. You know, grab some things there. Oh, the yin yang fell down. All right, so we're going to recline onto it. Hips are on the mats, torsos on the bolster. And then butterfly the legs, bringing the soles and the feet together. For this hip opener, if that feels like too much sensation, you can bring in the blocks of support under the legs there, or the knees. The blanket, unless you're too warm, you could use that to just ground the body. Just place that on your lap, your abdomen and hips. And the weight of that blanket on the inner thighs will help with the opening of the hips as those thigh bones are rotating the sockets, externally rotating. Once you get that lower body situated, arrange the arms. The hands can rest on the body, or you can take the arms to either side, opening the palms up or turning the palms down. Kind of play with that a little bit and see what feels best for your shoulders. This is a shoulder opener, chest opener as well as a hip opener. You're also bringing some good juju to the lower back. The lower back muscles are allowed to shorten and relax here in resting butterfly. And tending to your breath here, start to work with your breath, guide it to be smooth and even. Nice smooth, even breathing in and out through the nose. Give yourself a thank you for showing up for your practice. Set aside your to-do list. And connect with your personal intention for your practice of yoga tonight. What brought you to your mat tonight? Your heartfelt desire for yourself. As you're connecting with your intention. It's important to bring it into the present tense, into the now. Present tense rather than I will be or I want. I am or I feel whatever your intention is this evening for yourself, for others, for the world using positive word wording as well. The subconscious mind cannot process negatives. So if we're saying, I'm not stressed, I'm not stressed, I'm saying I am stressed. So instead of that, I am relaxed, I am at peace, I feel. Repeat your intention to yourself several times with deep conviction and feeling. It's about allowing the nervous system to come into balance. have more light force energy available for creative projects. For 
enjoying life. Listening to your body tonight. Remember that you can come out of a pose anytime you need to. If it feels unsafe or potentially injurious to you, then it's time to let it go. The practice of being, we rest in stillness in that acceptable zone of intensity where you're getting some release of the connective tissues. Muscles are relaxing, connective tissues stretching. The energy body getting a shower too. yourself a thank you for taking time to practice tonight. Taking a deeper breath in on this next exhale and slowly, or this next inhale and slowly exhaling. Lengthen your exhale, breathing in and then breathing out. Lengthening it out, adding gentle engagement of the abdomen on the exhale to really empty out the lungs and more of a passive inhale, shorter passive inhale, nice long guided exhale. the fingers and the toes. You may want to bring the hands onto the outer thighs to help fold the knees back together. Bring the soles of the feet onto the mat. Lift and lower the hips a few times. Get some movement in the low back. And as you're ready, you can roll to the side, come off of that bolster, scoot it out from underneath you. Come back down on your back. Take the feet wider apart and let the knees rest together against each other. So the feet are just on the edges of the mat or maybe even off the edges of the mat, depending on the length of your legs. Some people roll to the inner edges of the feet, so the outer edges and the soles are away from the ground. Other people have the soles of the feet on the ground, kind of stretching that outer ankle. The upper body part of resting pose is crossing the arms over the chest like you're giving yourself a hug, giving yourself a little squeeze, and then just letting the arms relax and drape across you. This improves the flow of energy through all six primary meridian lines or energy lines that run through the pelvis that relate to major organs, stomach, spleen, liver, gallbladder, 
kidneys, and the bladder. Notice any areas that it might be holding tension unnecessarily. Invite those areas to relax five or 10%, maybe more. around the room, allowing the sound vibration to help you release anything that no longer serves you. The practice of letting go and surrendering. So we don't always have to be talking it out or even knowing consciously what it is that we're releasing. Just let stuff go. over the chest, just kind of noticing which arms on top or closer to the face. Switch the cross of the arms if you like.
gradually begin to deepen your breathing. here to have a little stretch, moving, stretching a bit, release the form. Notice what would feel good to do in the moment. Follow that guidance. Breathing. side or the other transition to a seated position. Dragonfly is our next yin pose. So it's a wide-legged seat. Sometimes that's plenty of stretch or even leaning back a little bit depending on how tight it is in the inner thigh leg area there. We're coming forward any amount. And I've turned to the side here. You could turn to the side if you want. Have the backs of the heels, either with your mat or the blanket. If it's difficult to sit upright and have that low back curve present, you could also sit on your bolster or blanket, either one, but raising the hips a little bit. So as you fold forward, the, they can come forward with you. The hips and the pelvis can come forward with you. Then bringing in some support. And as you're moving into your forward fold, just noticing edges of sensation. Notice where those first layers of sensation are. You might pause there and breathe. Sometimes we miss some zones of stretch or release. We go right to our maximum. I know where I can go in this pose. And I go right there. Now kind of work your way through layers of sensation. Invite those leg muscles to relax. In a normal yoga practice, we would engage the thighs, right? Engage, engage, and come over. But we want the muscles to be soft during the end so that the connective tissues start to receive that stretch. And just remember that we're releasing when we need to. We're letting go of the pose when we need to. We need to do so before the full time is up. Just recline onto your back and work into that resting pose again or different position. Turning the gaze inward here. Imagine you can send the breath to any area that's feeling tight or tense. Stay more safe with the breath and with your awareness. Thank you. 
to use my hands to help move my legs when I come out of dragonfly. Place my fingertips behind the knee joint and actually use that hand and arm to bend my leg. And from there, recline onto your back. Take a moment to reset. Rest in that resting pose or some other position. Watch and witness reset and breathe. Notice what you notice. So each heel is going towards the lower corner of the mat. Bring the right heel over to meet the left and just check in with the amount of sensation, if any, on the outer thigh and hip. That feels okay. You can leave the heels right there. If it's too much, just inch them a little bit away from that lower left corner. Then inch your head and shoulders over to the left. So we're creating a nice arc. Nice side bend here, opening up the right side of the body. The right arm can extend overhead. Sometimes it's nice to bring in that bolster under the forearm. The left arm can extend as well. You can bend the elbows a bit and just let the arms relax overhead. If that doesn't feel good for your hands, arms, etc., if anything starts to go numb with the arms in that position, just bring the arms out of the pose. So bring them down alongside the torso or a little ways away from the body. Explore crossing one ankle over the other. See what that's like when you cross it one way versus the other. Acceptable level of intensity, a bearable stretch. And then noticing where you might relax the muscles onto the surfaces beneath you, just letting the muscles melt away from the body. 
bones. Directing your breath to any place that feels like it's resisting. to release this side bend, allow your body to guide you out of it slowly, gently, coming back to center. Notice if stillness or movement is being requested from your body. And breathe.
as you're ready, we'll set up for a second side from a basic shavasana pose with arms and legs extended. <coughs> and taking the feet wider apart. This time bringing the left heel over to meet the right and just checking in with that placement <coughs> that feels like an okay arc on the side of the hips, the outer thigh, you can stay there. If you need to, you can do less by inching the heels an inch or so to over to the left. Then bring your head and shoulders into it by inching them over to the right any amount. Extending that left arm overhead, maybe the right arm as well. And then adjusting the amount of your banana shape, the side bend banana shape here. Option to cross one ankle <coughs> over the other. Explore that, see what it's like to cross it one way versus the other. More important how it feels than how it looks in yin yoga. So the sides, each pose on each side might look different, might feel different. So instead of trying to force our body to go the same amount of side bend on this side as the first side, let it guide you into what it needs what feels best on this side. We improve the flow of energy through the gallbladder meridian line that runs all along the side body, relates to our ability to be confident, be decisive, and really it's about like the, the lion and the wizard of Oz scared, fearful, it's having that courage. Motivation and courage to step forward confidently. Get out of the head, into the heart.
opening with your breath. Deepening the breath. Slowly, slowly moving like a glacier. Slowly release the posture. Recentering yourself on your mat in stillness or some simple movement if that's what the body needs in the moment. Full breaths here. Notice what you notice. Witness the reset, the pose between poses. Your next posture, reclining twist, and place the bolster along the left side of the body on the left leg there lengthwise. And then roll to your left side so you can place that right leg on the bolster, bent leg. And then stretch that right arm behind you, maybe turning the head a bit towards the right. Just the position of that right leg. If you bend the knee more or less, maybe the foot is by your lower part of the mat, or maybe you start to kind of give space with your neighbors and props. You might be able to kick that foot forward a bit so the leg is coming more forward from the body instead of having a bent knee. That's a possible adjustment or option. And if your blanket is available, you might just place the folded blanket on the outer hip there just to kind of ground or weight that outer thigh that comes off the stack about this size and shape. You can just drape that right over that outer thigh there around the leg for you. Notice where all you might have less effort, more ease.
beginning with the breath. Start to slowly release the forearm. You might even roll towards that bolster, taking the right arm over to the left, roll onto your side for a moment before coming onto your back. Just take a few moments at center for stillness or movement before we set up for that second side. Nice full breaths here. As you're ready, we'll set up for that second side, moving that support over to the right side of the body, rolling onto your right side, and placing that left leg on the support, getting situated there in the lower body, and then moving that twist up the length of the spine, mindfully spinning that left arm behind you, Adjusting the turn of the head. And checking in with that left leg. Maybe you bend the knee more or less. Raising the thigh towards the torso or taking it away from the torso. Perhaps extending that leg straighter rather than having the left knee bent. Moving that foot and ankle forward in the bolster with it. You might weight that thigh or hip with the blanket just to help ground and anchor the lower body, your roots into the pose. This is twisted roots pose. wider center of the earth beneath us, another earth, our home, and our nourisher.
releasing form, might bring that left arm over to the right side. Taking as much time as you need. Our next pose is final relaxation pose. You need a little movement before you settle in for that, but be particular about getting situated, adjusted. Opening to receive all the benefits of your practice. Allowing yourself this time to be, to receive, giving back to yourself.
transitioning to comfortable seat. in the benefits of our practice by bringing the palms of the hands together, connecting the thumbs to the body, connecting with your personal intention for your practice of yoga tonight, and enjoying a moment of gratitude. Thank your very own body, mind, breath, and spirit. And thank you for sharing your practice with me. Benefits stay with you. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.